to Shop Talk where today I'll discuss color matching. And it's not as easy as running to the hardware store and grabbing onto a paint chip and having them spit out a formula for you. Uh, custom coloring, polyurethanes, there's a little bit more involved. And we'll talk about the key questions to consider before beginning your customer's match. We're going to talk about the sorts of materials that should be considered for the specific match and, and what's involved. But this won't just be one of those talky talky uh, tutorial videos. I'm going to show you how I achieve two different color matches using CF95AM. So let's dive in. If you know your customer needs a certain color, the first question should be, is it an indoor, is it an outdoor application? If it's an outdoor application, UV rays are going to have a pronounced effect on the urethane that you're coloring. This includes aliphatic systems. That doesn't mean you can't go for a custom color for your material. Just have the understanding that the color won't stay the same shade for a long period of time. So you need to explain that to the customer. So how long will the color match stay and last? It's impossible to predict that. It depends on environmental conditions, the geometry of the part. So let's say your customer says, look, I've got an application. It's on the equator. It's going to be outdoors all the time. <laughs> I just tease it. You can still go for the color match. The best reply to that question is it's post paint. Color match can still be important because if you do a custom color and then post paint over, if the paint gets scratched, you still have the undertone. Lots of color matches are done just in case there's some kind of a scratch that takes place. This is the best way to achieve perfection. If the answer is an indoor application, well now we're talking. As noted, aliphatic chemistry can be most effective for use of color matches as they're going to resist the oxidation under UV conditions. And since they're clear, they are easier to match. But water clear systems can be more difficult to work with. So you're going to need certain equipment, uh, degassing equipment, pressure equipment, sometimes even uh, warming up the product to ensure you don't have bubbles. But not to worry, most of the BJB materials within our lineup still are pretty good to add colors to, and they'll remain for a long period of time. The material of choice for an application is always critical to the success of a program. So if coloring is the, one of the most important aspects of it, the base color of the system, if it's not water clear, is super important to understand because you've got to overcome that specific color. One of the cool pieces or tools for your urethane toolbox is this cool color swatch chain of products. It shows everything, that, or most things, that BJB has in their lineup. So if you're looking for a custom color, looking for something translucent, it's going to be much easier to color match than something that's amber like this. The other cool thing is if you have one of these in your, in your repertoire, on your desk, if you have an application come up and you need certain flexibility, you can look on these and you can flex them and you can look at them, you can smack them with a hammer if you want. Gives you an idea on the certain applications and what, what material might work right off the bat. And if you have another need, you could, you could hang this around your neck and walk around the workshop and act like Mr. T and be the cool guy for the day. So there's that too. So make sure you contact me or your BJB customer service representative to get your hands on one of these material swatches so you can make the right choices for color and for properties. Still confused a little bit about what ha this has to do with color matching? Well, this particular set of swatches is the ColorFlex series. This has a base color of white. It's easy to overcome. But if you were to put 2% of our green uh, color into, into, say, CF60AM, it'll give you a look like this, and very nice green. But if you put the same 2% of our green color, the 6833, into a product like TC804, it's going to look like this. You can see the difference in the two shades because the 804 has a bright white base when it cures versus the CF series, which is kind of a light opaque white, easy to overcome. As mentioned, the BJB Color Flex series is an excellent solution for flexible parts where you need color stability, and it does contain a great UV package. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Scott, you said for years that UV additives are just a Band-Aid, and for many products it is, but I did find an awesome one that works well in the Color Flex series. And as you can see, this green ball, uh, this was played outside with the grandkids in a little game of outdoor baseball, and of course, they left it outside. 
I didn't leave it outside. They left it outside for a number of days, weeks, and or months, and you can see this is still a nice green color. So the ColorFlex series is a good option for indoor and outdoor applications depending on the shade and the timeline. So what to do once that material choice has been made and the color's been determined? Just call the color manufacturer and have them do the color match for you. That's a wrap, color match video over. So a customer came to me looking for a game part for a new game called Return of Dark Tower. Shameless plug, best game ever, just saying. Uh, these particular flame tokens are used in the game and there's actually four of them that come into play. And the friend of mine was actually 3D printing these and it took on the best setting like overnight to make one part. So I was like, why don't you just make a four cavity mold out of TC5130 and then choose a urethane and then custom color match your particular part. And he thought it was a great idea. So that's what we're gonna focus on for the color match video today. So I did take CF95AM and did a custom color to make these different flame token parts. It didn't have to have this exact metallic look that you can see here, wanted, but he did want the tone of the red and the yellow to come into play. So you're going to get to see in this next set of clips exactly how I achieved this color match using the CF95AM. And for this match, you're gonna see I used two different colors, a red oxide 6828 because it has kind of an orangish shade to it and this red 6826. Now I'm gonna start off with a ratio of eight to this because it's very orange and as you can see, we kind of needed an orange element to this and two grams of this red. And then you'll get to see the process, how it's done and how I use those colors to achieve the color match we're looking for. The start of this color match, we're going to be working on the uh, bottom of this particular piece of fire. Uh, because we're going to do a, a dual stage match, so we want to first start at the bottom. We're going to try and get that, that really rich looking red, almost has some orange in it. And whenever working with a color match, we're going to keep track of the exact percentages that we're putting into our small mix cup. Today we're going to start at a percentage of 8 of this red oxide, 2 of this red 6826. I'm going to simply put 8 grams into my cup. I usually work with 10 gram mixes. Uh, keeping in mind, I, I do sometimes make adjustments by adding a 0.1 or a 0.2. Now, the other important thing with doing custom color matches is to make sure that your scales are set to the tenth of a gram for accuracy later. Because if you have scales that aren't accurate or measure to the nearest half gram, you have to make much, much larger batches to ensure that you're gonna be good. Now I went 0.1 over. You might think that's ridiculous that I'd be going in to take out that 0.1. However, you want accuracy as you continue to use this time after time after time. So I'm gonna remove that, I removed that 0.1. Now I'm moving on to add two grams of the red. So now that my colors match, I have the poly side, which is side B on the CF95AM for BJB. I'm gonna put two grams, I'm mixing up 50 grams of total B side to 25 parts A, since the ratio is two to one by weight. And I'm gonna start, I have 48 grams pre-weight here. I'm gonna add two of this colorant we just made. Two grams perfectly added. Now we're gonna pre-mix this colorant into solution. So you can see we have this pretty well in solution. Now I'm gonna add my isocyanate side, which is the part A side at BJB. So since we did 50, we're gonna do 25 grams. So accuracy is practiced. Perfect, 25. Now we're gonna mix this in solution and we're going to pull a vacuum. We wanna get all the bubbles out before we pour plaques to test color. You may even need to make a specialty mold to make sure that you capture the right surface quality. Maybe it's a matte finish versus, versus a gloss finish. All that's very important. So once I have this thoroughly mixed, I'm gonna pull vacuum. So it took me three tries to make that red match. 
And at 10 grams per swatch, I only used 30 total grams of color. So pretty economical and it didn't take a whole lot of time. As you can see, there are three different shades here that I came up with. Uh, and again, based on the ambient lighting conditions, how well you can see the different iterations, but up close with the right lighting, you can see a big change between the three matches. And we settled on letter C, which was very, very close uh, to the actual end part and piece. So we're pretty happy about that match. And then also we did work on the yellow match as well, and it's the same thing. It took me three tries. The yellow did actually require three different colors instead of two, but again, uh, three tries, we nailed it on the third, very close match, I was real happy about that. One thing you'll want to do is get your hands on a color pack offered by BJB that gives you a, a whole plethora of opportunities of, with different colors so you can do your custom matches at your shop as well. Here's just a few keys to remember when working on the match that will save you some time. You'll find that oftentimes you need to warm up the tone. Uh, I've used a couple different methods, actually a couple different colors to warm the tone up. One of them here from BJB is a violet and one of them is a cherry red. A magenta works out very well to get the right tone you're looking for. Um, a lot of times even if you're working on like a gray match, sometimes it'll be too green or go into that shade or that area and you can tell it needs a warm tone. So add a little bit of these reds and that should tone it up. For many matches, you'll be asked uh, a certain Pantone number, and you can order these handy-dandy Pantone books online and use them. They'll access and share Pantone 429, different shades, and when they call for those, if you had a book, it might make it a lot easier. And in some cases, especially if you're doing like a water clear match, like I mentioned, those are a little easier. You could even, they have these starter color percentages as a starting point. So when we're talking about starting points and how to get started with a color match, where do I begin? Some of these Pantone charts actually give you some starter percentages. So this is a good way to utilize the Pantone charts as well as give you the colors that you need to match for your customer. And if nothing else, they make for a good fan. Lastly, you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind the mold surface. If the mold surface is a gloss finish or a matte finish, it makes a big difference when you're talking about a custom color match. So make sure you ask the customer exactly what the finish is supposed to be so that you can match the exact finish. You may even need to make a small silicone mold with the right finish to do your color match into. The end result turned out pretty good, especially in terms of the colors required. And I was able to make uh, some of these flame tokens also out of the TC880, which is a trans system, which is perfect for color matching as well because it has that neutral colored base. And there you have the color match tutorial. It's not hard. It does take a little, little bit of practice so you know which colors go with which to make the certain end result. But it can certainly save you time and money. And it's always good practice to send one of these color chips to your customers. Remember, I had this A, B, and C, right? So I might have a little different eye than the end customer does. So if you label your pieces, actually make two A's, two B's, two C's, and send one set to the customer and keep one set, so then he, when he says, yeah, I like letter C and you liked B, well obviously you're gonna use C because that's what the customer chose. Another trick of the trade when you're doing a custom color match for a customer. So that's it from this episode of BJB Shop Talk. If you have something that you'd like to have discussed or something you have a question about in terms of a color match, feel free to reach out to me or again, one of your BJB team representatives and we'll be happy to answer the question. Till next time, this is Scott.